Good evening, everybody, and welcome. My name is Subir, pronouns he, him, and I run events here at The Strand. Before we launch into a discussion of Katie Lee Beagle's newest book, It's Not Complicated, Simple Recipes for Every Day, I'd like to share a little bit of history about The Strand. The Strand was founded in 1927 by Benjamin Bass over on 4th Avenue's Book Row. Stretching from Union Square to Astor Place, Book Row gradually dwindled from 48 bookstores until, after 94 years, the Strand is a sole survivor, now run by third-generation owner Nancy Bass Wyden. We want to thank all of you for your support. Without our loyal community of book lovers, authors like Katie Lee and Gabi, we wouldn't be here today, and we are so appreciative of it. So tonight we are thrilled to have with us Katie Lee Beagle for the launch of her newest cookbook, It's Not Complicated, Simple Recipes for Every Day. Katie Lee is the author of Endless Summer Cookbook, the Comfort Table, and The Comfort Table Everyday Occasions. She's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen, host of the cooking channel's Beach Bites with Katie Lee, and a judge for the popular Food Network series Halloween Baking Championship. She can also be regularly seen on Beat Bobby Flay, The Rachel Ray Show, and as a contributor on Today. Joining Katie in conversation is Gabby Dalkin. Gabby, is a trained chef, recipe developer, entrepreneur, and food-slash-lifestyle writer based in Los Angeles. Her blog, whatsgabbycooking.com, features original recipes and images along with highlights from Gabby's life and travels. In April 2020, Gabby released her third cookbook, What's Gabby Cooking? Eat What You Want, 125 Recipes for Real Life. The book reflects Gabi's approach to balancing moderation and indulgence while inviting readers to let go of rules and restrictions and enjoy their food. The cookbook follows the success of her 2018 cookbook, What's Gabi Cooking? Everyday California Food, which debuted as the number one bestseller on Amazon in U.S. regional California cooking. In addition to her books, Gabi is known for a popular line of products for Williams Sonoma that include seasonings, salsas, infused oils, cheese boards, cocktail mixers, and more. And so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Katie and Gabi to the stage. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I got my coffee here too. It's Very so excited. Cool. I mean, we have a lot to discuss. We do. And I just want to say to start off that uh, this is really our kind of party because we are both, I'm guessing, I can't see what you're wearing, but I'm guessing you're in an elastic waistband as well. And I have slippers on. Oh, oh my slippers, where did mine go? I left mine in the other room, but I have fuzzy slippers as well. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I put jeans on once in the last, last year. You've had to put jeans on to film and how upsetting is it? Terrible. <laughs> So I had only put on jeans that were basically stretch pants that were disguised as jeans before this past week. Yeah. And then I was back to shooting the kitchen and I put on like real jeans with a button fly. It's hard. It was not pretty. <laughs> not pretty. It's really uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, that's that new, it's like half pandemic, half new mom life. I know. I'm like, which one is it? Is it because I ate a block of Velveeta every day that I was pregnant? Or is it? <laughs> hey, right? yeah. you, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> Like the baby weight or COVID weight? <laughs> Both for me. I was there was a lot of cookies and cocktails before I got pregnant with Poppy. <laughs> mm, of cookies, I also thought of you today because Ryan wanted chocolate chip cookies, and I know you're the queen of chocolate chip cookies. And he ordered from Levon Bakery because they have cookies without nuts now. I'm aware. I haven't had them yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Everybody out there um, that I'm, I'm watching your comments on the side of the screen. Are you nut or no nut in your chocolate chip cookies? Gabby and I are firmly no nut. Mm -hmm. It's it's a no nut kind of household. It's <laughs> offensive. We actually had a friend over, our neighbor came over the other day and he was like, chocolate chip walnuts, my favorite cookie. And I was like, see yourself out. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no nuts and brownies too, right? Absolutely oh. not. <laughs> Absolutely. The miso chocolate chip cookie. Well, hold on. We have to talk about the book for a okay. second. We'll have all night long. This is your fourth cookbook. Yes. And fifth book. 
Look, everyone's no nuts. I know. Oh, Look at that. Oh, the dog's barking. Gus, you're going to wake up. Hi, Gus. Everybody say hi to Gus. Um, okay, so fourth cookbook, mm -hmm. fifth book. Yes. We have the same editor and publishing company. Mm -hmm. How much of a dream? Okay, well, first of all, how long did it take for you to write this? And how much of a dream was it working with Holly and the team? Well, the book, I guess, I guess it's been a year and a half to two years. Well, no, it would have been two years because it was definitely 2019 when I was writing my proposal. Um, so it takes, it, it takes so long to get a cookbook. You know that. Yeah. Um, and we actually, we shot my cover. I did the same thing with Endless Summer. I shot my cover before I even turned in a manuscript. Wow. because I wanted to catch good weather. So we um, went out to Long Island, went to the farm stands. This was like October, um, October. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Took a bunch of photos. Uh, and then um, I turned in my manuscript later and we started our photo shoot was to start in March of 2020. And that was when COVID was just starting. It wasn't really full blown yet. Yes, there's the farm plan. Yes. And uh, I didn't, I couldn't go to the photo shoot because I was pregnant and we just all decided that it wasn't worth the risk for me to go. And like two days into our shoot, the lockdown happened. So um, I had been doing everything virtually. Like they had me on a screen so I could watch um, all the shots. And then we, we didn't even know if the book was going to be able to come out because we couldn't do a photo shoot. And then finally in August, my photographer, who's wonderful, Lucy Schaefer, and food stylist, um, Mariana Velasquez, they did um, the photo shoot, the two of them together, just the two of them. And uh, I did it virtually. So they were, you know, sending me pictures and we were editing and everything. I was just kind of glued to my computer. So it, the book, the recipes are not complicated. Putting the book together was very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so tell everyone a little bit about the inspiration if you if you haven't read the intro, and t like tell us about your Nancy Myers like obsession. Yes. Honestly, yes. this feels like you are Diane Keaton in something how to get. Well, that's what I was going for with the same turtleneck. <laughs> I also thought that I was gonna start dressing in all cream. I was <laughs> like, I'm just gonna like I bought like a bunch of cream sweaters and white jeans and stuff, and I was like, this is my new look, and that lasted no time. Uh, well, now you have a baby. So white is <laughs> not happening. So, so um, the, the inspiration for the book was Nancy Myers movies. And that's why I named it. It's not complicated. Kind of a nod to the film. It's complicated. Um, basically I want to live in one of her movies. And so I started thinking about the way that her movies always make me feel this like warm, comforting, um, familiar feeling. And so I wanted recipes like that. And like whenever I want to feel like that, her movies are what I turn to to watch over and over again. So I want these recipes to be the ones that people turn to over and over again. Like it's Tuesday night and you you want turkey meatloaf. Let me open up. It's not complicated. Or it's Christmas dinner. We're going to have the prime rib. Like that's to me, the ultimate compliment is if somebody, A, when somebody buys the book, I'm totally flattered that they want to spend their money on something I've written. But then when they make a recipe and they make it again, that's like the greatest feeling. The best feeling. I've been mm -hmm. seeing everyone, like I have friends who are very, making recipes from your book and posting it. And it's the best, it's so cool to see your work in action. It really is. It feels really, really good. I love when people tag me in their pictures so I can see it especially because it took two years to make, like it's, it takes longer to cook a book than it does to cook a baby. <laughs> right. it's a lot of work. Um, well, the recipes are incredible in here. And I just feel like you and I are food spirit animals, like mm -hmm, sure. donuts and cookies and brownies, everything in here looks amazing. What is like one recipe you would say, like they're obviously all, none, none of them are complicated, but like what's a great one to make for someone on a Tuesday or Wednesday night? Um, well, I mentioned the turkey meatloaf. That's one of my favorites. Uh, the roast chicken with croutons is a total favorite of ours because um, I've, I've found that people will 
get intimidated of a roast chicken and you know, it's really easy and yeah. um, you don't need to be intimidated. And the, the recipe is totally simple. Uh, it's cooked in an iron skillet. You don't need a roasting pan. I just put a layer of buttered baguette on the bottom of the iron skillet and put the chicken on top of it and put it in the oven. And then that baguette soaks up all the chicken juices and gets really toasty and crunchy. And you have that and a green salad and you're done. Game over. Have you ever been to Zuni Cafe in San Francisco? Yes. I they feel, have do they have croutons on their, on their chicken salad too? I think they do, yeah. Such a good combination. Yeah. Also, dispel the myth for everyone right now because I get this question a lot. If you put a piece of bread on the bottom and then a raw chicken on top of it, once it's cooked, you're safe. <laughs> just never know the twitter police will come i mean they're <laughs> real um talk to me about the spinach artichoke pasta because it's the first thing i will be making out of the book okay the spinach <laughs> artichoke pasta first of all i want to say anyone who has the book it's page 78 there was an error in printing and half of the directions are missing yeah, but they're in the back of the book now. Yes, there there is an insert, and I've gotten a million messages about it. Well, and, because look at this, you guys. Who <laughs> doesn't want to make this? <laughs> and their their new copies will not have that. But um, the spinach artichoke pasta, it's basically like the dip, but with pasta and cheese melted on top. And it was Ryan's idea. Ryan's my husband, anyone who doesn't know. Um, it was during the pandemic, and we were going through the pantry and had all the things to make that. So we decided to do it. And that was one of um, the only recipes that I took from pandemic into the book because the manuscript was already written. Yeah. Well, okay. So great question. How many recipes did you develop during pandemic that will go into your next book or onto the kitchen? And how do you curate the recipes that actually made it into this? That's a good question. I mean, some of these actually I, changed um like there's a recipe for spaghetti with clams in the book is that and, the one on the cover um well it no that's tomatoes on the cover but funny enough it was spaghetti with clams and then we changed it to a tomato recipe um but it, because i wanted to do it with clams because that's what Diane Keaton made and something's got to give that's clams. yes, yes yeah. that's the clams so during pandemic i started making that same recipe but with canned clams Mm -hmm. And I love it with canned clams. And easier. So much easier. Like I wished that I hadn't already mm -hmm. turned that in because I would have made it in the book with canned clams. Book number six. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when you're concepting the book, like what's your process? Do you put all your ideas like up on a big whiteboard and then narrow it down? Like how do you? I'm so old school. I get a three ring binder. And I put um, my dividers in it and I label them each like appetizers, salads, soups, entrees. And I write up a table of contents of what I would like it to be. And then I just start writing recipes and putting them in until a book builds. <laughs> and, it <laughs> <looks good>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I can kind of like write on the pages and make yeah. notes and stuff like that. What do you uh, do? Do you do, do, you do the whiteboard? I mean, in my mind, I want to do a whiteboard because it just looks oh. cool, but I don't own a whiteboard anymore. <laughs> I just, I do it all in Google Docs, write it all down, and then I submit it to Holly, our editor, mm -hmm. so she can look at it. And then I usually change it almost 100% by the time I do <laughs> You're so organized. I mean, I'm always so impressed by you. The way, I mean, you churn out recipes and they're always so good and like look so yeah. delicious they, it's i i don't know it's like my i feel like when someone asks you what your superpower is my superpower is writing recipes like i just like write them while i'm sleeping and then write them down when i wake up who knows what what inspires you well typically travel mm -hmm. such a big part of getting recipe concepts but this last year like we haven't been on a plane in a year. So it's been, you know, covert missions to the farmer's market and then really cooking a lot out of the pantry and making simple recipes. And also like the added thing, you know, being a mom, it's like, how fast can I get dinner on the table? Have you, have you changed your cooking since you had Iris? Yes. Like I didn't quite realize how little time you have to do anything. 
Yeah. But like gone are the days where you have like a two hour lead up to an actual dinner. What does that <laughs> even mean? The other day I was sitting like dreaming about like how I used to just be like, I don't have anything to do this afternoon. I think I'll go get a manicure pedicure. <laughs> Look at the the uh, like oh, they're they're so in their mangle. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like I'm not going to a nail salon right now because I'm still like you know yeah. staying solo. But um, I can't imagine just like taking two hours for myself right now either. It's too. It's so much work. What inspires you to write your recipes? Like, where do you draw your inspiration from? Besides your amazing place in Positano with a zucchini pasta that I can take one day. It's in there. The spaghetti with zucchini is in there. It is? Yes, it is. Oh, that's, our, that's our wedding pasta. You tell um, everyone where else you get your inspiration. It's not quite as good as theirs uh, because they deep fry their zucchini, but I, I figured it's a lot it's easier, easier to, to not, not deep fry it. Yeah. Who, has, who has time for that on a Tuesday? Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. Mm -hmm. so, so um i get my inspiration a lot from travel a lot from um just grocery shopping like i love to just and another thing that i haven't done in over a year now i love to just meander through a grocery store when people say oh where's the first place you want to go after covid i say the grocery store like mm -hmm. i want to go and just like take my time yeah. and go through the aisles and look at everything. You know, that's when I, I usually start the wheels turning. Okay. What are we going to make for dinner tonight? And, and all of that. And I, I do find inspiration from our viewers quite a bit from the kitchen. Like when I make something and then I see a lot of people have made it on Instagram and are posting it, it gives me more ideas because I think, okay, well, this resonated with them. Why did it resonate? Is it because of the method? Was it easy? Was it something healthy that they liked? So, uh, or if people are writing me saying that they want something that that's a big source for me. I feel like your recipes are so adaptable, which I think is such a huge bonus. Like in this book, On the Kitchen, in your other books, that's so nice to be able to either DM someone or watch them on TV or whatever and see that instead of using quinoa, you could use farro or rice or whatever. Mm -hmm. It really makes buying a book so worth it because there's so many ways you can just like amend things. Match. And I think all of us learned to do that even more throughout this pandemic because we were looking at our pantries so much and saying like, well, here's a recipe that uses brown rice. I only have quinoa or vice versa, whatever. And, and making those substitutions and realizing that the recipe is kind of like a roadmap and right. then you can fill it in. Although you and I laugh about this all the time that we'll see like a, a review of something like I made your biscuits and they were terrible. I substituted gluten-free flour and I used no butter. butter. Instead, I used, instead I used water. <laughs> I'm like, well, no wonder it didn't work. Yeah, that's true. The baking, the baking, you can't mess with the baking as much. No, 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 no. <laughs> My brother-in-law, bless his heart, I love him, but he loves to change up a recipe. And I, we have a family text chain and I got mm -hmm. one in the other day. I was like, sorry, sis, I tried your miso chocolate chip cookies and I substituted a bunch of stuff and it didn't work. No kidding. <laughs> and I wrote him a similar text and he's like, ha ha, yeah, that's pretty much it. Didn't use butter, used oil instead, didn't use any eggs. <laughs> like, That'll do it. Completely went off the rails. Baking soda, baking powder, maybe were optional. <laughs> <laughs> they were like misshapen, flat, weird. Like it looked like a flat scone and not a chocolate chip cookie at all. Oh my God. That, is there anything that you ran out of in your pantry early COVID days that you were like, I can never be without this ever again? <laughs> um, no, it was like weird stuff that I was holding on to because I was pregnant and like yeah. having cravings. Like I had to have banana peppers at all times. That was one of your pregnancy cravings. Mm -hmm. So, and I've always loved banana peppers, but it was like particularly important to me that I had them. So every time we'd get a grocery delivery, I would get them. <laughs> And we had all these banana peppers because I was hoarding them. And <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> like I'll be just fine without the banana peppers. I mean, I didn't have any cravings. Did you have it? Like, were you a sweet or savory person? You know, I haven't quite decided if I had cravings or if I just was giving myself a license <laughs> to eat whatever I wanted. <laughs> um, like I ate a lot of mayonnaise, which I would in real life eat a lot of mayonnaise if it yeah. wouldn't mean that like I'd never fit into my clothes again. <laughs> and the same thing with Velveeta. I ate a lot of Velveeta. Did you do the Velveeta and Rotel and dump it in a slow cooker? And I love it? that. I love that. Yeah. But I particularly liked a grilled cheese with mayonnaise and Velveeta. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was my childhood favorite sandwich. Yeah. So I went right back to it. Did So did you like indulge a lot or did you just? I mean, my body was predominantly cookies <laughs> for nine months and not even nine months. Cause then my first like month home after having Poppy, I, my dad and my mom were here and I just ate more cookies. <laughs> I thought that was a great idea. Well, also you're just like so busy um, with, you need food that you, can you eat. just grab something and eat it. Yeah. It's, yeah, there were a lot of cookies in my life. I'm getting back into the salad situation. But even that, like, we don't have to talk about mom stuff the whole time. But, like, eating greens isn't great. Poppy doesn't like when I eat, like, a bunch of kale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have to think about their little digestive systems. They're not, they're not, they haven't put their digestive systems through the ringer like we have. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you're, film, when you're filming, like, all your, show, your travel shows, Beach Bites and everything, are you just, like, how do you feel at the end of the day? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Because it's like, I won't eat a lot of the food, but you're tasting just a bite of so many different kinds of things. It's kind of like, you know, if you go to one of those restaurants that has a tasting menu, that all the portions are really tiny, but you leave, even though you're still kind of hungry, you leave feeling like crap usually yeah. because it's like all this different mixture of food and so many flavors. Doesn't, doesn't agree. Um, I love the story that that's where you met Ryan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we met on Beach Bites. What what was the what was your favorite place you've ever been for that show? Um, you know, we we talk a lot about uh, Puerto Rico um, because we had such good food there, and he and I were like secretly dating. Um, we didn't want the rest of the crew to know yet because we didn't know if it was just a fling or what. And so we would secretly go to this little restaurant that we found. Um, I don't know how he found it, but it was this tiny little place and they do the fried whole fish and they made this great sauce that went on it. Yeah. And we still talk about that fish all the time. We went there multiple nights in a row. Um, well, I'm down for a family joint family vacations to Puerto Rico when the world opens back up. <laughs> I have no problem hopping on a plane. Maybe not tomorrow. I'm ready for any vacation. <laughs> Where's the first place you will go? Um, well, when we're able to travel internationally, we would like to go back to where we got married in Italy. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, but I'm dying to go to Montana. That's somewhere that's been really high on my list for a long time. I'm into that. I mean, well, you know this already. We talk about it all the time on text, but Thomas and Poppy and I will join you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can dress up the girls in little cowgirl outfits. And Matching them. cowboy hats. <laughs> so cute. Um, what's one, like, okay, so you live in New York predominantly. I mean, not last year, but you've been in New York for however long. Long time, right? 18 years. No. I've lived in Long Island, New York, kind of back and forth. What um, do you mean? Like, what what are you like? I feel like New York's such a going out to eat city. Mm -hmm. Like, what restaurant do you miss the most, and what like what do you just miss about it besides the general amazingness of being out in New York City? Um, you know, there's such an excitement to New York City restaurants, and I'm I'm ready to go and sit outside. We just haven't had the weather to go do it, uh, but. Um, I I definitely want to go back to my favorite place is Emilio Bellato's and I you love it. That? Yes, yes, so good. I love it. And we got takeout from there the other night, and uh, Anthony, the chef, put he he texted me. He's like, I just baked some fresh focaccia. I put it in there for you, and it was like two giant loaves of focaccia. I've been eating it for days. It was yeah. fantastic. 
So um, I want to go back there. And then my other like comfort place is San Ambrose in the West Village. And I want to go sit outside there and drink an Aperol Spritz. Oh, God, that sounds magical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, just going out to eat and not cooking and cleaning. Right. So exciting. I Although, know. Although, that's watching, don't bother going out to eat. Just cook from this. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yeah. You know what would be so cool? I'm sure people have already started this. If they cook their way through this entire book. You know, my mother-in-law told me she's going to do that. Isn't that so sweet? She oh wants to God. really enjoy my book. What a good mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Very, very so sweet. sweet. Is she a good yeah. cook? Uh, yes, she has her dishes that like she makes regularly. Um, she makes really good chili and beef stroganoff. And uh, Ryan's family, their tradition when they have chili is they get club crackers and put butter on them and then dip them in the chili. And that's really good. So I mean anything with butter. I just yeah. really support adding butter to most things. <laughs> um, wait, what was I just going to ask you? Something about this book. It'll come to me. Let me see if I wrote it down earlier. Mm. Oh yeah. What are you going to? So when the like Easter is this weekend, are you cooking something out of the book? I just feel like I was on a page that made sense, and then so I there's a ham in the book that I highly recommend for Easter. Uh, it has an, just a really simple apricot jam glaze on it. So we'll probably have, um, you know, I mean, if it's just the two of us. I don't know that we'll eat a whole ham. I might do the Iris roast. Made ham yet? The, no, Iris hasn't made it onto ham yet. Okay. Um, we're actually <laughs> going to also have uh, oysters because Ooh. an oyster farm that I love on Long Island uh, called Pico Oysters they're doing special delivery on Easter. We did it on New Year's Eve and they come and bring their oysters in your driveway and chuck them and put them on ice and drop them off. What a lovely um, thing. So special. Great. Because, uh, you know, the oyster farms have been hit really hard because the restaurants aren't buying oysters. Right. So they're doing things like this to try to sell. And we bought oysters from them over the summer. They would sell them not shucked, just uh, still in the shell and we'd get them and just put them on the grill and they were so I so I vaguely remember you posting about that mm -hmm. and like, I'm upset I'm not there yeah it was really, really <laughs> so we're gonna have some oysters I might make out of the book uh the herbed oven fries to go with them yep I support that yep and then I might do uh there's a roasted carrot salad with a uh, ranch dressing so uh, I'm it. carrots are spring so Oh, yeah, yeah. And who doesn't want like a ranch dressing? I feel like oh, we might go very non traditional and make Ryan's ribs. Oh, yes, Ryan's ribs are delicious. Yeah, does he have a lot of input? Like, does he have a lot of ideas that turn into recipes for you? He does actually. Oh, he's sitting over on the couch, going, <laughs> There you go, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, no, he makes really, really good food. Like Ryan's a great cook. And the first couple of, well, I'd, I'd say at least the first two months of having the baby, he cooked dinner almost every single night. What a I, He's looking at me. He's going, first like two months. Pregnancy. He's like, I cooked for you. Well, you, not every meal my entire pregnancy. I cooked a lot when I was pregnant. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, no, I, I was really like, I was laid up in bed. I, I was in a lot of pain after giving birth and couldn't really do anything for at least six weeks. And so he really took charge of the kitchen. I was getting ready to say of the chicken. <laughs> he took charge of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we were talking about this before we left the green room that since becoming moms are like we get sidetracked very easily <laughs> yeah and i can't speak anymore like I, I, but i read an article about losing your words it's a sign of the pandemic because you haven't oh, been really? around people to have all these conversations and people <laughs> just lost their work i i how Tell, Ryan, you tell me if Katie does this, but I'll be like, Thomas, can you grab the thing from the thing? And I'll be like, 
be more specific. I'm like the thing in the thing. And he's like, I'm you're and we're gonna get a divorce. <laughs> I just like get the glazed over look on my face. I'm like, uh and he's looks at me he's like, you're doing that zombie thing again. I'm crying. This is too <laughs> real. Although I think I was kind of a zombie before I had a baby. Now I just have an excuse. <laughs> And Iris does it too, where she'll just all of a sudden she'll start going. And it's like she got that from you. Oh my God. What have you noticed that Poppy does of you? Um, I mean, God, that's a great question. Thomas today told me she has my feet, and I'm like, thanks. Oh. <laughs> like, you have cute feet, but. I birthed my husband. Like there was a child cut out of my stomach because I had a C-section for those of you who don't know. And it's Thomas. It's a little baby girl version of Thomas. And she, thank God he's cute. <laughs> um, but she's like, she's just started to be like very laughing. Like she laughs a lot. She's like a big gummy smile. Aww. It's so fun. Like it's just wild to watch their personality develop. She's, She's she's very go with the flow. Like the girl yeah. loves the nap, which she takes after her mother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Enjoy the naps. I know they as they get older, the naps stop. They cut down, don't they? The, Iris is like queen of the cat nap, and she it's used to like sleep for minutes? hours and hours. No. Yeah, it's like fifteen minutes now. Thirty is like a good one. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, I have a list of hot mm. fire, rapid fire questions for you. Okay, I love your rapid fire questions. Before we get to the audience questions. What did you want to be when you were a kid? <laughs> um, I remember being a kid and saying I wanted to be president, and that's like not <laughs> even anywhere in the realm of anything I'd want to be. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. So I, I was the... I guess I just wanted to be in charge. <laughs> I'll take it. I accept that. Um, what is your least favorite food? Wasabi and any kind of organ meat. Like I hate foie gras. Okay. Question about the wasabi though. Cause I don't like it either. Will you eat the ginger when you go out for a sushi restaurant? Mm, I Not your favorite. Care about it. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Um, to speak every language. Oh, I, that was such an educational answer. <laughs> I would like to go to Be Invisible, and I would like to fly. <laughs> oh, you know what I'd really like to be able to do? Sing. Oh, God, me too. I'm so poor. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I'd really like to be able to do? Sit. <laughs> Just sit for the rest of my life. I know, we're not even <laughs> listening to you. Okay. <laughs> 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 At a restaurant, would you rather order dessert or another pasta? Another pasta. This is why we're friends. <laughs> Favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Has that always been? Yep. I need you to hang out with my parents. You would love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt a little judgment in my ice cream choice from you. No, my dad is obsessed with mint chocolate chip, but like... Yeah. I think I honestly, it's all he ever gets. He's never tried my fish food, which is great for me because I can have a full pint of fish food on my own. <laughs> Works really well. I'd rather have soft serve though. If oh. soft serve is an option, I would take it. Cup or cone? Look at my mascara running down my face oh. from crying earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, it definitely would be a cone. I love a cone. Do you, okay. I just found out that this ice cream shop down the road, you can order hot waffle cones to be delivered to your oh. house with pints. Oh. The way restaurants have pivoted during COVID is kind of incredible. Like they're so amazing. It makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to see people supporting the restaurants because like mm -hmm. you said earlier, they've been hit so hard, but stuff like that is, I hope it doesn't go away once we're all. I know, I know. Like I want a hot waffle cone when I want a hot waffle cone. Sounds delicious. Now I want ice cream so bad. There, it's available. You know what I want my superpower to be? To be able to eat whatever I want and not gain any weight. Touche. <laughs> I could totally, I could get on board with that. If they made your life into a movie, who would play you? Mm. 
Um, well, I'd have to say Allie McGraw because I've heard my whole life that we look just alike. So <laughs> there you go. Who sure. would play Ryan? Who would play Ryan? Oh, Ryan. Who would play you? In a, well, Steve McQueen, I guess. Then, then we could. <laughs> we, Oh, well, I know who would play him, Bradley Cooper, because Ryan looks like Bradley Cooper. <laughs> he does look like Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Something about Bradley Cooper going to the gym. I saw him there last year before COVID. He's very strong and very intense. He didn't oh, want to be my friend. Well, oh, there, I was there and I was like, hi, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I'm working out. And I was like, okay, sorry. <laughs> Oh. There were only three of us there. It wasn't like I was stalking him, but you know, whatever. Okay, um, we'll mark him right off the list then. <laughs> Taylor Swift or Beyonce? Oh, how do you choose? No, I love just, them both. I know. They're very different. It's a hard question. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Favorite TV show you've discovered during COVID? Mm, oh yeah, Yellowstone. That might be part of my Montana obsession. I was just gonna say that's definitely why you yeah. want to go to like my dude ranch. <laughs> I started watching last night a show that you told me about though, Lupin. Oh, Lupin's excellent. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, and he's Love very it. attractive. Mm -hmm. Oh, very. Yeah, they're coming out with a season. Well, you finish season one, but season two is coming. Oh, I love TV. I do too. I do you have time to watch it again now that you've. That um, your virus is older. I have one hour at night, really, before I go to sleep, <laughs> and that's when I watch TV. Do you watch TV while you're recipe testing? Do you like, have it on in the background? Not really, no. Because you're focused. Yeah, I and I, I like the silence when I'm cooking. Like people will ask me what I listen to music yeah. and I don't. I just yeah. like I just like it to be quiet. It's kind of like meditative. Like you're just yeah. in the zone. Mm -hmm, totally. What is what? Oh, I just turned to chocolate chip bread pudding. Again, spirit animals. What is one recipe in here? And then we can get to the audience questions that really surprised you. That surprised me. Oh, that's a good question. Let me flip through real quick and refresh my memory. By the way, for everybody, like if you haven't yet received your book, I just need you to know how many recipes is this? A hundred? A um, hundred plus. Yeah, it's excellent. Ch oh, cheese, sausage, you. pepper, and onions with polenta. I mean, we do have such a good editor. You're right. I mean, Holly. Animal style burgers. That's, that's my copycat of. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what recipe really surprised me as being one that like st stood out to me that is like a sleeper hit is the broccoli green curry coconut soup. Ooh, that sounds it is good. so good. And our doorman in our building was kind of like my taste tester because I would always mix stuff and take it down to him and he'd eat it. And he told me that that was one of his very favorites. Oh my God. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And it's so easy. Yeah. I love an, an easy soup recipe that you can throw together in under 20 minutes, but like mm -hmm. maybe garlic bread on the side feels like oh. my everyday meal. Yum. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to start reading some questions. There's one good one that I saw. I'm sure there were others that came over in the chat, though, that I want to ask first. Karina said, curious how it all started for you, ladies. When you think about what you want to be, what you would be when, wait, when you think about what you want to be, what would you say to your younger self? Oh, uh, I'm reading this question, too. <clears throat> that you don't have to be a chef to write a cookbook and have good recipes. Yeah. I'm not a chef. Um, Gabby is. Gabby's well, trained. I call yeah. it in school. I never worked in a restaurant. I'm not that Yeah, cool. but you have the training. I don't. And sometimes I wish that I did just because I wish that I could like julienne vegetables perfectly and, and have like those great knife skills. Um, what would I say to my younger self? Uh that's a good question. I mean, I, I guess, you know, in college I worked in restaurants. I wish that I had maybe done that a little bit more um, and had like a little bit more of that kind of rougher experience. I mean, working in a restaurant is one of the hardest jobs. And, and I wish that I had kind of, I, not that I have any regrets or I think that my career would be different. I just think when you're young and you could have that stamina that that would have been a great experience. Or I also would have told myself to go abroad and study. 
mm. uh, in food. I, I did a study abroad in college, but like I have a girlfriend who um, after culinary school, she went to Bordeaux and, and did a whole stage there. And like, what an amazing experience. That's pretty magical. And something so different than what we would get here in the States. Yeah. What would you have done? <sighs> what would I have done differently or what would I tell myself? Um, God, it's a really good question. <laughs> I think I probably would have told, and I still say this now, like don't take no for an answer. If there's something that you want to do, just find that person who's going to say yes and go for it. And also just not to be nervous about it. Like yes. I left my job as a private chef when I was, I don't know, 24 to try and do what's got me cooking full time. And I was terrified. I was like, what if I don't make it? What if I can't afford to pay my bills? And I think, you know, planning for a couple of months. So I had a little bit of padding was very helpful, but I also just think you got to go for it and give yourself the chance to jump and succeed or fail. And either way, you're going to learn something from it. Yeah. I always would tell myself, well, somebody else did it and had success. So why can't I? Yeah, exactly. And if you, if someone else, if someone says no, find someone else who's going to say yes. Yep. My, I tell my mom that all the time. I'm like, can you pay for my airfare home? And she's like, you're an adult. Doesn't hurt to ask mom. Doesn't hurt to ask. And then you go ask dad. I absolutely. <laughs> <Don't say yes. laughs> um, okay. What are your must have kitchen items? That's what Tina asked. Um, my must have kitchen items. I love my mini food processor. Mm -hmm so that I don't have to get the whole big one out every time. I use my blender all the time because I do love smoothies and I use it to puree soups. And I love um, my Le Creuset Dutch oven. Yeah. And three knives, just a chef's knife, a serrated knife and a paring knife and that's it. Yeah, you don't need all the knives. Mm -mm. Common misconception. Yeah, and an iron um, skillet, I love my iron skillet. Oh yeah. So, oh, I forgot there was a sale on these cool skillets I wanted the other day. That just reminded me. Oh, I really yeah. missed the boat. Um, someone said, Katie, do you have some type of journal where you keep all your recipes? No, I wish that I had a journal. I wish I was that person. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are just like, I get like a spiral notebook and just like scratch things out. And then it, I mean, it looks like no one could ever read it and I throw it away at the end. When you were a kid in school, like, was it a big deal to go get your notebooks at the beginning of every year? Like, yes. if it was colors, I, I knew it. Like, I still want to do that. Like, when September rolls around, like, I want to go buy pencils. Were you did, that? Yeah, it made me so happy. But my mom made me reuse my comp books until I was out of paper. Like, she doesn't uh -huh. believe in Like, so if, if I had it from seventh grade science, I had to use it for eighth grade science until uh -huh. it was empty. <laughs> I get it from, like, a green perspective ahead of her time. I was like, I want a new comp book, mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanted a trapper keeper more than anything. And my mom thought they were too expensive. I, we had, you know, like when people would do this and like for test taking with their trapper right. keepers or their notebooks, I was that girl. <laughs> Nobody's going to cheat off of me. I put my arm up around. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have any plans to create a cookbook with recipes for toddlers and kids that also appeal to the rest of the family? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> I, I feel like um, Iris, I, I, I mean, this is you know, what people say who don't have kids and people who have kids who aren't eating yet. Um, I want her to eat what we're eating. Mm -hmm. And I hope that she does. Yeah. Well, I feel like so much of that is seeing her. I don't know. I mean, I've been a parent for three, three months, but they see you eat it and you're excited about it. Yeah. It'll be exciting to them. I also really want to eat her chicken fingers that are left over. Yeah. I support you. <laughs> and I want to eat. I can't wait for Poppy to start eating like Annie's mac and cheese. Bring yes. it on. Oh, bring it on. I cannot I wait. love mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite midnight snack? Hmm. Um, yeah, I love popcorn, love popcorn and ice cream. Um, chocolate chip. Yes. Favorite midnight stack. I mean, probably a rice crispy treat. Oh, that sounds so good. Like the recipe on the back of the 
Jet Puff Marshmallows is incorrect. They need to hire me to rewrite it because it's skimpy on the marshmallows. Oh, you have to have lots of marshmallows. Double the marshmallows and one and a half times the butter and the same amount of Rice Krispies, and then we're in business. Mm, 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 mm. No, I know you wouldn't like it, but I like to put peanut butter in it and then drizzle it with chocolate. I would do that with almond butter for okay. sure. I just, one day I'll learn to like peanut butter. I know it's the only thing we really differ on. Although I, 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 I have never made a meatloaf before, and your meatloaf is going to be the first meatloaf You've I made. Never made a meatloaf. No, something about like a loaf of meat scares me. <laughs> like I'll it's eat it so good. I know, and I'll eat meatballs all day long. But the loaf of meat, it just, I, I've just never done it before. And oh my, my god! Maker. And then to have a meatloaf sandwich. I know, but like a meatloaf panini does sound excellent. Mm -hmm. I just I want one really cushy white bread with, with mayonnaise. I mean, okay, we can have a meatloaf sandwich taste test one day because I really like to eat that with you. I can eat so much meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm gonna make it. Maybe, maybe I'll make it for Insta Live next week. I'll do your meatloaf. <laughs> I said that's my superpower. I can eat meatloaf. So that you can eat a lot of it. <laughs> um, okay, what is your favorite breakfast when you want something fast and healthy? Oh, um, it's the same breakfast I've had every single morning since I gave birth, and that's oatmeal with blueberries, strawberries, um, a spoonful of either peanut butter or almond butter, and a little almond milk, put some chia seeds on there. I love that. So healthy. What kind of oats do you use? Like old fashioned oats or quick oats? Old fashioned oats. I like the Bob's Red Mill. I, I need to, I, I haven't had oatmeal since having poppy and I feel like I'm missing, I'm missing out. It's supposed to be good for your lactation. <laughs> that's, that's why I started eating it. I never liked oatmeal really before, and now I love it. Really? I have a recipe in the book for a quinoa porridge, and what? that's another one. Is that in breakfast? But uh, that's in the breakfast. That's one of my favorite healthy breakfasts as well. Um, I would say if I was answering the question, I would go with a smoothie. I love a blueberry banana smoothie. smoothie. Yep. My favorite unhealthy breakfast would be right here. And that's the drop biscuits, the scrambled eggs, and that's brown sugar sriracha bacon. Oh my, wait, I'm sorry. How do you make brown sugar sriracha bacon? You put um, brown sugar and sriracha in a, in a zip top bag and you squish it around. And then and you cook it. it. Yeah. This is what my unhealthy breakfast would be. Oh, breakfast not Breakfast not close. Mm -hmm. with like obscene amounts of hot sauce and guacamole. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have a green, pineapple green smoothie in here. Yeah, that's a healthy one. That sounds delicious. I love breakfast. Um, I miss going out for breakfast. I always felt like, it, not even that I liked the food that I'd get in a restaurant so much for breakfast, it was always just like a treat. It is a real treat to go out and have like a coffee and have a leisurely breakfast. I can't remember the restaurant we went to last time we were in New York, but maybe it was St. Ambrose. Do they have breakfast there? Mm -hmm. I think it might have been. They have that really pretty patio. Um, no. Was it the one in the West Village? They have a nice little outside. Maybe. Side of the cafe. Um, Katie, what would you pick as your favorite three-course menu from It's Not Complicated? Oh, well, I would start, I would have for an hors d'oeuvre, the lemon caper deviled eggs. Mm. Um, and then I would have as a cocktail to go with it an Amalfi spritz. Yes. And then I would have, let's see, you all know that I love a big salad. I'd have the spicy kale Caesar salad. And I would have for my main course, the barbecue potato chip crusted salmon. That looks insane. I love salmon. Salmon is one of my favorite, favorite foods. And for dessert, I, oh, and I would have that with a side of the um, crispy Brussels sprouts with uh, Fresno chilies, capers, and Parmesan. Mm. And then I would have for dessert, ooh, for dessert, what would I have? Um, oh, maybe the cannoli trifle. Oh, I mean, that sounds like a dream meal. 
also hard to beat. I know we've already said it, but the miso chocolate chip cookies. What does the miso do for everyone watching and for me to the chocolate chip cookies? Like, what does it add? Well, it gives you that little umami punch, but um, you don't really taste the miso. You just taste that the chocolate is chocolatier and it gives a really great texture to the cookie. It makes it like a chewy chocolate chip cookie. Ooh. Like I'm not a crispy flat chocolate chip cookie. I want chew. Yeah. I want it. I want it to be underbaked, to be honest. Yes. I basically want raw cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> the miso makes it have like a cookie dough texture. Okay. I'm going to try this. Maybe that's what we'll make. Out. We're going to do one on Insta Live for the month of April. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to come say hi. For sure. You might be sleeping, but you'll come. I love, I love a Gabi Insta Live. Um, okay, you both have done major home kitchen renovations. How did you manage that while pregnant and not arguing with your husbands? <laughs> you did yours pregnant. I wasn't. So. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, Thomas and I argued a little bit about things. We were trying to make some decisions, but for the most part, we have very different things that we care about. So like if it was something he was passionate about, I let him have his way. If I was passionate about it, he'd be like, You're, that's fine, whatever you want. It's kind of how we work together too. Like we both just are so different. We're, we both have very different roles. That's smart. You choose your battles. Yeah. Did Ryan have opinions in the kitchen reno? Um, not really. Oh, and everyone thinks that I renovated my little blue kitchen in the Hamptons and into the white kitchen, but we actually moved. That was <laughs> both rental houses across the street from each other and we had to move. So <laughs> it was unplanned and last minute. Um, so that was not a, a, a renovated kitchen. It was a new kitchen altogether. Um, but in the city, in our apartment, we did a complete gut renovation of this place and moved in a couple minutes, couple, couple minutes, a couple months, <laughs> there goes my words, <laughs> a couple of months before the pandemic hit. And so um, this was major, major renovation. And the kitchen is like my dream kitchen. It's a, a beautiful kitchen and I love it. I can't wait to come cook in it one day with you. Yes. Um, not cookbook related, but what is your favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Classic. Mm -hmm. What's yours? Um, probably mushroom. Mm -hmm. But like 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 sauteed mushrooms. You can't just throw raw mushrooms Thank on Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's I, like monstrous. That's like nuts and cookies. Yeah, it's upsetting. How do you feel about pineapple and ham on your pizza? Not for me, but if someone wants it, they can have it. Thomas, did you hear that? He, I think he closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> is he for it or against it? Loves it. And I'm like, nope, not happening. I will, you can make it yourself. Order it yourself. <laughs> People really are one or the other. Um, here's a very cute question. Being that you are both new moms, what do you hope to instill in your girls as they grow up? Hmm, that's such a good God, there's so much. <laughs> yeah. I want more than anything for her to be confident. I was going to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. like, I just, I just want her to feel like she can be herself. Yeah. I love that. I'm just going to say ditto. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on an air fryer? Um, I don't think you need it. Do you like to watch your food cook? Um, I, I mean, I see it. Like I turn the light on in the oven Yeah, and, <laughs> and look at it. I mean, I feel like the air fryer, like, I just don't like to have a lot in my kitchen. Like I, I feel like I don't have a lot on the counters. Yeah. Um, and if you have a convection oven, you could essentially do the same thing. But if you like the air fryer, I say go for it. Yeah, we have one. I use that. Okay. You know what it's really great for is wings. Mm. It is great for wings, but we also have a lot of storage space because we're yeah. not in New York City. We had an air fryer. Um, probably like six months and it ended up breaking, but, but, um, I did use it. I mean, it, it was like, you know, it was good. Yeah. But I wasn't like dying for it. 
<clears throat> um, oh, I love this question. And I like this question because you and I have never done this together and it's upsetting to me. So we will when we're in the same city one day. What is the key to hosting a great dinner party? Oh, um, mine would be plan ahead and don't make anything that's a la minute. It all has to be stuff that you can kind of do ahead. What's yeah. your um, I think prepping ahead is super important and keeping it simple. Like when I was a private chef, we would entertain for like 40 or 50 people and I'd cook the whole meal, but it would just be like tri-tip and sides and a salad. Like I'm not mm -hmm. trying to reinvent the wheel and do a dinner party and sweat the whole, like it's just keep it simple. People will be so thrilled. Yeah. And I love a buffet. Love a buffet. Yeah. What the, what did I see in here? Was it the prime rib? Yeah, I'm gonna love prime rib for a dinner yeah. party. Right, like for a night that and like some mashed potatoes and a salad. Yes. Game over. Like that's so impressive. Game over. A prime rib, it like looks so impressive and it is the easiest thing to make. Um, I know we've talked about this before, but one day can we like pick a hotel that has really good food and go teach a cooking class together and invite everyone who wants to come? I would love to do that. That's like Wouldn't one that more dream weekends. Yes. Yeah, like somewhere where we could just go have some wine and have like happy hour. Ryan and Thomas can hang out with the kids. I mean, I'm just putting it out there for any hotels that are listening that want to <laughs> like a resort. We would like to do that. I mean, if you have a lazy river, that's totally fine. <laughs> that was my favorite. We, we grew up playing tennis. And at this one hotel where we would stay at in Phoenix for tennis tournaments, there was a lazy river. And I would just, I would be like, oh. win my tennis match, peace out. I just like float down the lazy that river. The river sounds so nice right now. <laughs> Have a tropical drink too. Yeah, of course, an umbrella oh, in your drink, yes. like a, a pina colada, a mojito. Oh, oh God. living so good. Everyone's down. You guys, brainstorm, <laughs> brainstorm some ideas. Instagram DM us, tweet us, whatever. <laughs> I see people saying, "Pop me in." <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I feel it. Like, I feel like we are running out of time. No, do we have any last minute questions? It looks like. Yeah, we've got a couple minutes left if anybody else has one. Um, I saw one and then I lost it of one that looked like a good question. Where did it go? Of course, I can't remember what it was because I can't remember anything. My grandma used to say that she suffered from CRS, can't remember shit. <laughs> That's me. Your grandma was a huge part of you getting into food, right? Totally. She she really um, was. Actually, today would have been her birthday. Oh, happy and, birthday, Graham. Yes, happy birthday, Grandma. She was the best cook on the planet. And oh, did I, you cooking with her when you were little? Yeah, she, it was how I learned how to cook and uh, why I loved cooking. So, so her cooking and my grandpa's enthusiasm for eating, that's where it all started. So <laughs> did, were your parents really into it? No, both of my parents. I mean, my dad likes to barbecue and to bake. My mom mm -hmm. could never cook again and be totally content with life. I, I don't know where it came from. They me. must be happy to have you. Oh my God. They, it, well, it's just like not a vacation when I go home now because they're like, you cook dinner. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, I came to relax. Um, well, now you have that little baby Poppy that you can always yeah. always turn to and teach her how to cook. I'm going to, I put her in the little baby Bjorn bouncer and walk her through recipes when Thomas is like at the driving range or something. I'm like, this girl's going to know how to write a recipe by the time she's five. That's what I do. I say, I say to uh, Iris that when I'm cooking, I like pretend like I'm doing a cooking show. I'm like, yeah. now we're going to chop up the cucumber <laughs> into quarters. hundred <laughs> percent. It might actually be a really, have you guys started watching waffles and mochi? No. Um, I mean, Poppy doesn't understand anything yet, but we watch it and it's incredible. Oh, oh I'll definitely check it out. It's very cute. Well, it looks like we're coming to oh. eight o'clock. There it is. It's like the clock striking 12 and Cinderella's turning back into a pumpkin. Yeah, except for we're both already wearing sweatpants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much for a fantastic conversation. I am now starving as a result of it. 
Oh, thank you so much. And thank you to The Strand. I mean, I was so uh, thrilled to get to do this with The Strand. As somebody who's lived in New York now for almost 18 years, it's such an iconic bookstore. And I was thrilled that you all wanted to have me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Gabby, so much. You're such a good friend. And, oh my and God, my pleasure. Game to do this. It was, I know that you're so busy with baby and-, and no, uh, I'm so excited to celebrate so this. You had two babies in the last 12 months. <laughs> That's a lot this of work. A lot less work than, than, than the other baby. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined us. I really appreciate you spending your evening with us and I know your time's precious and and I appreciate your support on the book as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to everyone. And on that note, thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening. I can hear a crying baby. I have to go feed her. Oh no. <laughs> <Go>. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye everybody.